waited, guys. I waited so fucking hard, but no amount of patience could squeeze any answers out of Lindsay, who I guess is on a mid-season break. So I made this, and I am so, so sorry. Aliens. Ghosts. Illuminati. Um, pyramids? Mysteries. Welcome to the unnatural world. It all started with a bear. The year, 2016. The setting, a channel for educating children aged 3 and up about lesbians, gays, bisexuals, and transsexuals. The mystery, what the fuck is up with Teddy? Present day, Lindsay Amer. Amer goes about her regular business of setting up to record the latest episode of Queer Kids Stuff. But something feels wrong. Teddy is nowhere to be found. After some panicked searching, Lindsay calls the authorities to report the bear's disappearance. 911, what is your emergency? Hello, um, I... What is your emergency, ma'am? I, um, I'm not a ma'am. I'm a non-binary intersex femme with matching day-glow underpants. This line is for emergencies, ma'am. Please clear the line. Stop assuming my gender. Ma'am, are you aware it's a felony to prank call this number? This isn't a prank. My teddy bear, he's ran away. Are you fucking kidding me? Can you please just send someone over right away? Oh, I'll send someone over all right. Crazy bitch. As Lindsay awaited assistance, Teddy was getting further away. But what was her motivation for finding him? Love? Companionship? Or did he hold valuable information? Back to 2016, and Lindsay and Teddy have just finished their first episode of Queer Kid Stuff Season 1. It was a success, and retained more than 7 views. Everything seemed fine, the channel was flourishing, and the relationship between Lindsay and Teddy was stronger than ever. Or so it seemed. <laughs> We interviewed some of Lindsay and Teddy's neighbors. No one reported anything out of the ordinary, and our investigation came to a halt. Until we received an anonymous phone call. They never argued and they never shouted. Sure, it seemed fine on the surface, but it's when Lindsay goes quiet, that's when shit's about to get real. Ask Fluffy, he knows. Public records show Lindsay was living in a shared tenancy with Teddy at the time of his disappearance in April 2017. But earlier records show a third member of the household, one Fluffy McFlufferson, who left the property just before production on Queer Kid Stuff began. The investigation was live again. What horrors had Fluffy seen that drove him out of his own home? And how could we locate someone who, perhaps, didn't want to be located? Find out after these messages. Darling, it's so cold outside and we can't afford the gas bill. I know, Mary, but at today's prices, we have to choose between eating and staying warm. Father, I'm cold. Oh, darling, the children can hardly bear it. Between this and my trapped wind, I am most uncomfortable. Did someone say trapped wind? Try new Fart X tablets, designed to slip inside you and break down any excess gas within minutes. Oh, I feel better already. And the children are warmer too. Yay! Thanks, Fartex. Fartex and its affiliates accept no responsibility for any side effects, including increased appetite, loss of sight, and waking up in the middle of the night covered in your family's blood. Fishu Hedo! Oh! Hada ni yoi! Tamashi no tame ni yoi! Fuwa fuwa no sakana! Anata no enue o kasuri! Yoichi tai no ruru! Sakana no atama! No sakana! Fishu Hedo! Oh! Fluffy had disappeared from the public eye. No tax records, no registered address, no sightings. An offering of Season 6 of Game of Thrones laid down at a stone altar allowed us to invoke the spirit of Imhotep, who allowed us one question. Where is Fluffy McFlufferson? Moments later, we were sent GPS coordinates, and the hunt was on. New York. A beautiful vista for those high up enough to ignore the smell of the streets and the blood in the gutters. With a population of 8.5 million, the search would be near impossible, even with the coordinates, which led us to a small church tucked away from the masses. Had Fluffy devoted his life to worship? If so, what had he seen that drove him into the arms of a benevolent Sky Daddy? Every answer seemed to raise yet more questions, creating some kind of web, or maybe even flowchart. We were unable to enter the church as our sound man, Paul, was wearing a hijab that would not allow him to go any further and could not be removed without causing severe brain damage. Our only option was to act under the cover of darkness, when Paul's hijab would be sleeping, allowing us to roam the consecrated ground unhindered. Midnight. With only the moon lighting our way, we stepped carefully through the churchyard with full knowledge that some priests hide traps around the exterior of their church to catch any roaming Jews. The following is a recording from the night in question. Viewer discretion is advised. 
This way, guys! It's this way! What way? This way, you fucking idiot! Follow my voice! Don't shout or you wake Paul's head jab! Follow my fucking voice and I won't have to shout! You guys are the worst production team ever. What was that? It's Steve! He's got his leg caught in a bear trap! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Shit, Steve! Are you okay? No, I'm not okay! My leg's in a bear trap! I'm not fucking okay! Well, there's no need to say it like that, Steve! Wait, guys, what's this? Our cameraman was losing a lot of blood, but little did he know he had solved the mystery of Fluffy's whereabouts. There before us, as Steve's life force ebbed away, was the gravestone of Fluffy McFlufferson. Inquiries into how Fluffy met his end were blocked at every turn, eventually resulting in a cease and desist order being slid under the door of our production office. Someone out there, probably very high up, was trying to keep what befell him a secret, upgrading this from a simple mystery to a motherfucking conspiracy. But the question still remains, where is Teddy, and has he met the same fate? Only time will tell.